Hi guys, my name is Vera and today I'll show you how to paint our neon red cherry blossom. Before we start, let's make sure we have everything that we will need for today. First things first, we're gonna need a canvas. I will be using this large 16 by 20 inch canvas, but if you would like to go smaller, go for it. Remember, the bigger the canvas, the longer it's gonna take you and the harder it's gonna be. So if you wanna have a bit of slightly easier job, go with maybe half of the size that I'm using or even a quarter. But if you would like to go with the same size, go for it, no problem at all. And if you feel like you are total pro, you can even go with a bigger size, so up to you. Uh, next thing we're gonna need is some sort of mixing palette. I have lots of paper plates here around that I will be mixing my paint on, so grab something to mix your paint on. Next thing you're gonna need is a cloth or a paper towel. I have quite a few of those reusable fabric cloths that I will be using. If you don't have a reusable fabric cloth, you can use a paper towel, napkin, toilet paper, anything that you have around will work just fine. After that, we're gonna need painting water, very important. Here is my painting water here. And we will need a couple brushes. I will be using three different brushes. I'm gonna be using large brush, medium brush, and a small pointy brush. In my case, my large brush and my medium brushes are square, but that's just a personal preference. They don't have to be square. If you have a pointy medium brush or a rounded edge around the top medium brush or large brush, go for it. That's just my personal preference. And if you, let's say, have more than three brushes, even better, you can choose for every particular step which brush you think would work best and do it that way. Just remember guys, if you're using smaller canvas, you wanna go with the smaller brushes. I will be suggesting brushes based on the size of my canvas. So keep that in mind. And another thing to keep in mind, guys, this is a video recording, so if you wanna pause it at any point, give yourself a little bit more time, go for it. And of course, the last things, we're gonna need a paint. I will be using primary colors. I have red, yellow, blue, black, and white that I'll be mixing into all shades that we'll be using today. But if you would like to use pre-mixed colors, you can use teals, you can use reds, you can use pinks. That's pretty much the colors you're gonna need. You're gonna need a red, bright and vibrant red, uh, pink, very light, more like a, actually any light pink will work, and teal, and I would say, again, go with a bright and vibrant teal. So those are the colors you're gonna need if you're using pre-mixed paint. But if you don't have pre-mixed paint or you prefer to mix from primaries, no problem, you're gonna be mixing along with me because I will be mixing all my colors. Oh, and of course, black and white, very important. All right, what are we gonna start with here? We're gonna start with wetting our canvas. So you're gonna grab either the cloth, if you have a cloth, or the biggest brush that you have, you'll dip it in the water and you're gonna wet your whole canvas. I think I'm gonna go with a cloth. Yeah, let's go with a cloth. Just because I have it and it's much faster to do this with a cloth than with a brush, but no worries, take your time. And guys, if any of you are using paper, you don't have to do this, only people who are using canvas. And if you're using absolutely tiny canvas, maybe like a quarter of my size or even smaller, you don't have to do it as well. Only people who are using fairly large canvases have to wet their canvases. Because why are we doing this? We are doing this to help us spread the paint over the large surface fast and without leaving any white spots of canvas visible. So that's why we're doing it. If you have a very small canvas, you're not gonna have that problem anyway. So you don't have to do this, but if you do this, it wouldn't be a mistake either. So we're gonna wet the whole thing. Now, if you're wondering how wet, however wet you want, you can't overdo it with water. If you do a lot of water, not a problem. If you do a little water, not a problem. After that, we're gonna move on to our color. So we're gonna start by putting um, two colors on your plate. If you have pre-mixed colors, you're gonna put your bright teal and you're gonna put black. So just those two colors. If you are mixing, you're gonna put blue, white, yellow, and black, which I am mixing. So I'm gonna put blue, white, yellow, and black on my plate. I'm gonna grab a fresh plate, just so you guys can see better what I'm doing here. Okay. 
So here are my blue, yellow, white, and black. Now I will start by mixing my teal because I don't have pre-mixed teal. How I'm gonna do this? I will start by mixing blue. So I will take some primary blue and some white, mix them up. I usually start, um, try, I usually like starting with a base of white. So I'm gonna scoop some white on the side, then I will take some blue, add them in. Uh, I will get the right shade of blue, which this is the right shade of blue. That's exactly the blue that I wanted. And now little by little, I'm going to start adding yellow. You don't want to start with a lot of yellow right away because yellow overtakes everything fast. It's going to turn it to green if you add too much. If let's say you add equal amounts of yellow right now, it's going to be fully green. It's not going to be teal. So for us to get a teal, we have to start adding smidge by smidge, little by little until we get to the right color. And it might be enough from the first try. This is pretty teal looking to me already. And that was just one smidge of yellow. So do you see? That's exactly the color that I want. I think we could add another smidge here. But technically that was a good color from the first try. Perfect, do you see? Beautiful color. Okay, so you're gonna make teal. I'm actually gonna make more of it. I just showed you how to make it, but now I'm gonna make way more of it because I will need way more of it. So I'm gonna mix some more white, some more blue and a little more yellow. Okay, I have my teal, beautiful, beautiful color. So that's exactly the color that I'm going to start with here. Um, and I'm gonna go on the top of my canvas, so right here. And with the large brush strokes, I'm gonna cover the area there and I'm gonna be dipping my brush in the water. So every time when I run out of paint, before I refill my brush with paint, I'm gonna dip it in the water. You see, I covered quite a bit. I would say maybe one third of your canvas. Now, another thing that I'm going to do right away is I'm going to paint my edges because I already have this paint on my brush, so I might as well. That way I don't have to make this color again, especially if you're mixing it. So it's always easiest to do it right away. If you used pre-mixed steel, no problem. You can leave this step for later and do it last, or you can completely skip it. You don't have to do your edges. I just personally find that it looks so much better when your edges are fully done. So I like doing it right away as I go. Awesome. So now reserve a little bit of this teal. If you have ability, if you made a lot, reserve a little bit. We're going to start mixing it with black, but don't mix it leave some untouched if you made a lot if you made only a little bit that's okay you can use all of it and then later on when we need it we'll mix it again no big deal it doesn't have to be a perfect match with the next color if you can though reserve a little for later and now i'm gonna grab some black just a touch of black just a smidge and i'll add it to the same color And with this color, I'm gonna go lower here. Do you see, I'm putting it right under, right under. And that's the same teal with just a smidge of black. So it looks kind of gray-y, but also with a shade of teal. So I'm gonna put it right under, right under, right under. And as soon as that right under, done. So without refilling on my brush, I'm gonna blend it up into my teal. 
Now this only works when this color is still wet, so you have to do it right away. You can't take your time and just wait. You have to do this right away. So right away we're gonna go up. So don't refill your brush. Make sure you almost run out of paint on your brush. And with whatever left, just a tiny bit, continue going up with this large brush strokes. And you will see, it will start blending alternatively if it dried up way too fast both of your colors are dry what you could do is you wash your brush and you do the exact same thing but with a clean slightly wet brush and what that will do that moisture that extra water on your clean slightly wet brush will pick up will water down the paint and will pick it up and will give you ability to spread it i prefer to do this while it's wet without washing my brush just the same brush um, the goal is just don't refill it and it should work perfectly fine for you but again, if it's not working out, wash off your brush, dub it up on a cloth, and then do the same thing. It will help you. And now after this, we're gonna move on to our black. So we're gonna grab straight black, lots of it. And you can start on a background, on a bottom here. So we're gonna go from the bottom. We'll cover literally the whole bottom. And I'm not doing my edges right away yet. I'm going to do everything on the front here first. And then whenever I'm done here, then I'm going to go on to my edges and finish my edges. And the reason is because I'm holding this edge all the time. So if I do it right now, my hand is going to have all the black and my canvas is not going to have that much. So you see I'm going right to my gray, but I'm not overlapping it just yet. I will be overlapping it in a second after I'm done with the bottom. Okay, so do you see I went straight to my tealy gray. Now, using the same brush with just a touch of paint on it, I'm not refilling it again, or if you completely run out, you can refill. Just don't take too much paint on your brush. Just take a little bit. And again, you use the biggest brush. Now we're gonna start laying our brush strokes slightly on an angle and we wanna make them very transparent and we're gonna overlap this top part, very brush strokey. Let me show you. And I'll grab my canvas and bring it a little closer. So do you see there's not a whole bunch of paint going on there? There's a solid amount, but not uh, to the point that your brush strokes are um, completely square and boxy. Do you see they're still very transparent? So that's what you want, you want that transparency. So how you get it? Use very little paint on your brush and don't push hard. Let me show you what you don't wanna do. And I'll fix it later, I'll show you how to fix it too. What you don't wanna do is take too much paint and do this. Do you see, that's a square. That's a boxy brush stroke, so you don't want those. So how you fix it, you just take uh, either cleaner brush or just a fully empty brush and you go over it and you lightly smudge it. And do you see, it gets way more transparent that's exactly what we want. This is what we want. This is what we're looking for. And we'll first mess up this line so the line doesn't look straight anymore. You see, no more line. Gone. And now we're going to continue going a little bit higher with this. You don't have to go all the way. We will have some spaces on the top that are completely untouched. go a little bit higher for sure. You see guys, I have a little bit more on this right side. 
and on my left side. And now I am pretty much done with my uh, background here. Let me show you without a glare. I know there's a lot of glare going on right now. Uh, but once you're done with this, you're just going to take some black and cover your edges, or at least that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move on to my edges. Okay guys, so now this is what we have going on here. Teal with graduate transition into black background. Now we're gonna let it all dry. This black has to be fully dry before, well, maybe not fully, but mostly dry before we can move forward. So I would suggest everyone take a couple minutes. Acrylic paint usually dries really, really fast. So before you take a couple of minutes, what you could do, just go um, look at your painting and see if there are any blobs there because sometimes when you color something uh, it will not go even there will be blobs so if there are any blobs smudge them that will give you a uh, better drying time and it dry more even so just take care of blobs first and then take five ten minutes let it all dry if you have a hair dryer nearby maybe you're doing this in a comfort of your own home or your own couch um, and you have a hair dryer nearby grab a hair dryer and dry it with a hair drying that will really help the speed of drying if not what you could do you could just do this this really helps with the speed of drying too and burn a couple calories at the same time so it's like an exercise and it helps with drying your canvas and if you don't want to do either no problem just let it be for a couple of minutes and then whenever you feel like it mostly dry or dry to touch Come back, resume this video, and we'll paint again, and I'll do the same. I'm gonna let it dry, and then I'll come back as soon as it dries enough for us to paint. See you guys soon. Okay, guys, I am back, and I'm ready to show you our next steps. My painting is not fully dry. There are still a couple spots that are a little wet, as you can see, but mostly it is pretty dry to touch. So I'm going to continue, and do you remember I told you to reserve a little bit of that teal color for later? Now is the later. We're gonna use medium brush for the step. And you, if you still have a little bit of that teal that we use for the background, use that. If not, you can make it again. And it's blue, white, and yellow. You start with mixing blue and white. And then little by little, you add the yellow until you get the right color. And if it doesn't match your perfect first teal perfectly, that's fine. As long as it's somewhat matched to your first teal, you're all good. And with this color, we will add some circles here. So we're gonna start right here. We will add a couple circles right here. You can have more or less. The goal with them is to be very transparent and brush strokey. So you don't want a blob. Let me show you what you do and you, what you don't want. This is what you don't want. Do you see? It's like super solid. What you do want is this. Do you see the transparency of this? That's what you want. Alternatively, you can put the blobby one first. Let me show you. And then go ahead with your finger and smudge the outer edge. Maybe inner edge a little too. So you need those transparent circles and we're gonna make quite a few of those here in this steel. And you decide whether you wanna make them just with a brush or with a brush and your finger, whichever works. And we will add a couple here. Again, you can add just one, you can add two, you can add three, four, as many as you want. They can totally overlap and make sure they're all different sizes. You don't want to have a copy-paste um, circle. And you will see, once you start doing this, your paint will be blending because your black is still pretty fresh. And that's a good thing. It's going to help us to make them more transparent. If we did it over perfectly dry paint, it's going to be a little bit harder for us to get them transparent. That's not a bad thing if they start blending.
think this is enough for me. I don't want to add any more here. I'm quite happy with this amount. But again, if you guys would like a little more, go for it. I'm not going to tell you not to add any more. As many as you think you're going to like. And if you accidentally cover too much teal there, what you could do, I'm not saying you should. If you um, still have enough teal visible, leave it, uh, leave it. But if not, just grab your brush and brush in a little bit more teal here. That's only if you overdid it with black and you don't see any more teal there. If you went too far, then you can always add it right now. Now is a good time for you to add some teal. But only if you want to. Again, guys, you don't have to do it. All of it is optional. Circles are not optional, but the brush strokes are very, very optional. Okay, I have my teal. Beautiful. Let's make this one a little bigger. Do you see how transparent they are? That's what you want. This transparency is super important here. So just a little bit of paint on your brush, not too much paint, and only touch your canvas very, very lightly. After this, we're going to wash our brush and we're going to move on to bright red. And you can use either your medium brush or your large brush for this, or you can do a combo of a medium brush and a large brush. Now, guys, if you have um, pre-mixed super, super bright red, that's what you're going to use. The brightest red that you have. I am going to actually mix the color because my red, the ones that I have right now in my hand, I'll show you. My primary red, it's not the brightest if you put it on a dark colors, and I'll show you why. So here's my brush, here's my red. It looks pretty bright here, right? But once I put it here, do you see? It looks pretty dark. You almost can't see it. So for me, I will need to mix it, especially when it dries. When it dries, it's almost transparent. So I'm going to need to mix mine with a touch of white and a touch of yellow to make it a bit redder because this is more like a magenta base color. It's more like a very, very dark pink. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to need to add a touch of yellow and a touch of white to it to make it brighter and more visible and more vibrant and more like on a yellow side. If you have good, bright, pre-mixed red, you don't have to add anything. So here's my red. I'm just going to add some yellow to it. Mix it in and I have to take some white and mix it in. Okay, now this is the color I will be using. It looks a little dimmer right now, but once it dries, it's going to be super bright. All right, guys, we're going to start with the top and we're going to add a couple of brush strokes up here. So with our large brush, it's very messy. This is a very abstract background painting. You can do your edges right away as well as you go. Do you see very, very abstract, very abstract but I'm doing pretty solid here. And then you see I'm making smaller brush strokes and extending it further here. So this is one of those paintings, guys, that if you love abstract, you're gonna love it because it gives you a lot of freedom. If you hate abstract and you love specific directions, you might not enjoy this very much because there is a lot of abstract on this background. Now, after we have this, maybe a little bit more, we're going to start adding circles in red. So the same circles that we did here in teal, we're going to start doing in red. And I'm going to start by putting one right here. And I will be using my large brush for now. After that, I'm going to add one right here. You could totally use your medium brush if you find that easier. Or more comfortable. Okay, now I'm gonna move further. I'll add one right here. Now I'm gonna need to mix more color. I ran out of my paint. Okay, 
Okay, some red right there. Off to that, I'll add a couple of brush strokes in a circular motion right here. You see very light again. Do you remember how we use just a touch of paint on our brush and we only lightly scrape in the surface of your canvas? That's exactly what you do here with this color too. I'll add one more. And last one I'm gonna add right here and I'm pretty much done with this red. Now guys, remember again, this is just our background. This is not something to worry about. The main star in this painting is the cherry blossom branches and flowers. The background, you're not gonna see much of it in the end. So I wouldn't worry about it right now. As long as you have a good color scheme going on, you should be okay there. Um, and before we move to the next color, let's splatter a little bit with the red as well. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna water down this red a little bit. And there are two different ways you can splatter your painting. One of the ways is, oops, sorry guys, canvas difficulties here, easel difficulties. All right. Guys, it's averted. We're all good. So one of the ways is you put your canvas like this. You put your canvas horizontal and then with watered down paint and brush full of it, you do this. And this is what it's going to do for you. Do you see the splatter? It's going to be large um, splatter and you're not going to be much in control of where it goes. But again, because this is such an abstract painting, it's going to work for you. Other option of how you could splatter is, again, you water down your paint and then make sure all the paint is all the way in the bristles of the brush. So all the way. There's not just a blob of paint on top and no paint anywhere else. So the paint is all the way in a brush. And then you take a clean brush in your left hand and a brush with paint into your right hand and you bang with a brush that has paint over the brush that doesn't and that will give you more of a fireworky splatter and it's going to be more controlled as well where that's going to land. So here it is. Now you guys can decide how much splatter and where you want to have it. I usually add quite a bit in this corner and I'm gonna add a little bit here, but that's pretty much it. I don't think I wanna add it anywhere else. Technically, you could add it on all black if you wanted to, that will look nice too. But you don't need that much of it. Okay. I am good here. So guys, again, we have to give it a second to dry. This is a lot of layering on this painting and there's a lot of drying times in between. This doesn't have to dry fully, but it has to be drier than what it is right now. So I'm gonna do this. And I will pause this video for a couple minutes. And once this dries up, again, doesn't have to be fully dry, just dries up a little bit more than what it is right now. I will come back to you and we will continue. Hey guys, my painting is a little drier, so I can show you our next color and our next color. And as you can see, it's not fully dry, it's just a little drier. Next color is going to be pink. So we're going to make light pink. How are you going to make it? You're going to grab some white and mix some red with it. And you will get pink. If you have pre-mixed light pink, feel free to use that as well. If you have multiple shades of pink, choose which one is your favorite and you use that one. This is the pink that I will be using here. That was my red. That is my pink. And I'm gonna try it on a canvas first and see if I like it. And if I don't like it, I'll change it. I'm not gonna commit to it until I try it. So I'm gonna go right here. Oh yes, that's the color that I want, exactly that one. Um, 
doesn't really pick up how pink it is. It looks like white on a camera, but really it's pretty pink. Maybe I'll add just a touch more pink to it, red to it, so you guys can see it better on camera, because this comes out as white for some reason looking at the video. Okay, so what are we gonna do with a color that you love, light pink? You're gonna start adding a couple of brush strokes here. Very lightly, do you see? And then we're gonna make a couple of those swirly circles. So we'll put one right here. I think I want to switch from a large brush. I think I would just want to add a couple more brush strokes here in a large brush and switch to medium brush. I find medium brush generally a bit more comfortable for the swirls. So I'll actually not even wash it for now. I'll just put it aside and I'll grab my medium brush and I will add some swirls the same way that we did with red and other colors very lightly. Beauty. You see again, the same way. I'm starting swirling from the middle and then going a bit further and further and further. And now I'm gonna highlight the middles of some teal ones here. to this one too. Beautiful. And anywhere else where you guys want it to be. Let's highlight this one a little. Do you see how light and transparent? That's important. Just keep it very light and transparent. Just use as little paint as possible on your brush. One right here. And touch your canvas very, very lightly. And you'll get that effect. Yeah, I think this is good for now. So now what I will do, I'm going to wash off my medium brush and I will grab, do you remember how big brush I didn't wash it off? I just left it with paint on. So now I'm going to water down some paint a little bit. And if you can leave some of this pink for later, leave it because we're still going to use a lot of it for flowers. If not, you can mix it again and make similar pink. So now I'm going to splatter a little bit with this again. I'm going to hold this brush, clean medium brush in my left hand and a brush with the paint in my right hand. And I'm gonna splatter. Splatter some here. Honestly, anywhere where you guys want it to be. Wherever. Done, done, and done. Okay, now I'm washing off my large brush. I am done with my large brush, not going to use it anymore. Let me show you here. I know it glares a little, so it's hard to see sometimes. And guys, this is a pitch black color. It shows a little gray on my camera here. It's because I have a lot of lights going on to make it all visible. But yeah, it shows a little gray, but it is a pitch black color. So this painting in real life is way more contrast than what it shows on camera. So if yours look like, whoa, this is crazy going on here. That's fine. It's supposed to look that way. That's the right look for it. Now, after we have this, we're going to move on to our branches. And we're going to do all our branches in black first. After that, we're going to let them dry for a little bit. Again, this is going to be our last drying break. I promise no more drying breaks after that, but we will need to let them dry a little bit. It doesn't have to be long. We just cannot put our flowers until our branches are dry. And don't blob paint, it's going to dry really fast as long as you don't blob it on. So just take a good amount of paint. 
but not more than what you need. And I will start with a medium brush. And at some point, I'm gonna switch to small brush to finish them up, but I will start with a medium brush. If you guys are using smaller canvases, you might wanna go right with a small brush. It's much safer bet. So we're gonna start by positioning two larger branches and then we'll position some smaller branches. So one large branch is gonna come from here and it's gonna go right here. The goal with all the branches is to have them thicker where they start growing from. So my branch is growing from here, so it should be thicker here and then it gradually should get thinner, 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 thinner and very thin on the end. And another goal, they should not be straight. So let me show you. We'll start right here and I'll make my first line and I'll bring it around here. And do you see, I switched to using my brush differently so my line looks really, really small in the end. Now if you cannot get your line that small with a medium brush, you can go halfway through with a medium brush, then switch to small brush and finish up with a smaller brush. And for me, I just used uh, the top edge of the medium brush here to get that fine line. And I'm actually gonna go over it again and I'm gonna make it thicker where it needs to be thicker. And I'm not gonna make it thicker on the end. The end needs to be nice and fine. So that's my first main branch. And right away I will bring it to the top as well, to the edge on the top. And my second main branch is gonna go right here. So it's gonna start either in the same spot or close by. And again, as soon as I put the first line, I'm gonna go over it and finalize it. Make it the way I need it to be. Again, very important for it to be thick on top. And then gradually get thinner as you go lower. Awesome, we have our main couple of branches. Now there's gonna be another branch coming from here and there's gonna be another branch coming from here. So we'll position those and then we'll switch to smaller branches that are coming out of those. So let's start with this one. Um, it's not gonna be a very big branch and it's not gonna be a very thick branch either. So this is as a base pretty good. And again, if you can bring it to the edge right away, and there's gonna be another one on top here. Now we have a uh, basis for all our branches. Now we're gonna start adding branches that are coming out from those branches. They're gonna be much, much smaller. You can still use the top edge of your medium brush if you find that you have a nice medium brush that can give you fine lines, because do you see my medium brush is very versatile. It can give me thick brush strokes like this, but it can also give me this fine line brush strokes if I use the top edge of it. If you can get that out of your medium brush, go for it. If not, switch to small brush here. It might take you a little bit longer using small brush, but it is a safer way to go for sure. So we're gonna grab whichever brush you decide to use. I would definitely recommend smaller one. And all the small branches that are coming out of the big, big branches, it's important that all of them should start from the main branch and go out. Never start them from the outside and bring in, always from the branch out. And the reason why is wherever you start your branch is gonna be the thickest point. You want them to be thicker uh, where they come from. So where they grow from, you want them to be a bit thicker. And then as they grow, you want them to get thinner, thinner and have a nice thin end. That's your goal here. So I'm gonna start with this one and I will add a couple of branches coming out of here. Again, you see they're nice and long and beautiful. They're not short and stubby, they're quite long here. And you can add as many as you want. You can just, that might be enough for you or you might want more. Your call. We'll add one right here. One right there. And then I'll add a couple here as well.
hand on the top or over here. Here. Maybe a couple of really small ones right here. Imagine there are more branches there. Beautiful. I am so loving this, guys. Okay, now once we have this, we cannot start adding our flowers unless our branches are dry. So what I recommend you do is you wash off your brush, medium or small brush, whichever works, and then with a clean, dry brush, you go over spots that have blobs. So you look for those blobs to help your painting dry faster. So I don't know if you guys can see, I have quite a few blobs. So you can see them on a glare, do you see? On a glare, you can see my blobs. So I'm gonna go ahead and I will smudge those blobs to have my painting dry faster and more even because I need all those branches to dry and if I start adding my flowers and I accidentally smudge a blob, it's not gonna be a good look. So I need to make sure that it dries evenly and then when we start adding our flowers, we don't get into the blob. After you get rid of the blobs, it should dry pretty fast. Awesome. No more blobs for me. This is blobless. And now I'm going to dry it up. I'm going to do this. It's already actually dry, pretty dry. I can see it's drying right in front of my eyes. Whoops. Yeah, my paint dries really, really fast. So this wouldn't be long. This would be probably a minute of doing this and we're good to go. And while I do this, let me tell you what we're gonna do next. Next, we're gonna add our flowers. We're gonna have bigger flowers and smaller flowers. And you can add them with either your medium brush or the small brush, depending how big your painting is and how comfortable you are with your medium brush. And we will use the same pink that we added on a background unless you would like go with any other different shade of pink which you're fine to do you're allowed to do that if you would like no problem at all after we have the base of our flowers we're gonna add red middles to them and we'll finish up with black dots in the middle of the flowers and white highlights over our flowers and our branches so we still have quite a bit of work to do here we're not quite done yet and guys this is the painting that starts coming together and look nice once we get past the flowers. Flowers are the breaking point for this painting. It's that point after which you look at it and you're like, ah, oh, I see it, it's nice, I like it. So, okay, let's see. Well, some places are still wet, some places are pretty dry. I'm gonna start mixing my pink because I don't have any left. So I'm gonna grab my medium brush and I'm gonna mix quite a bit of it. All right, I have my pink. I think it's pretty similar to the first color I used. Um, but again, I, as I mentioned before, if it's same color, good. If it's not, it's not a big problem here. So I'm gonna start with positioning my biggest flowers first, and then I'm gonna move on, move on to smaller flowers. And I recommend that you do the same. Start with the biggest flowers, and then move on smaller, smaller, and smaller flowers. So my biggest flower is gonna be somewhere around here. And how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna start um, I'll show you. It's going to have five flower petals. They can have more, they can have less, but five I think is good. Let me make sure this is dry enough for me to paint. It's not crazy dry, but I think it's going to be good. So I'm going to start, this is how my flower petal is going to look like. Do you see like a heart? And I will add most, a lot of those hearts coming out all from the same spot. 
Do you see I'm rotating my brush as I go? To add those hearts. And this was perfect for five if you feel like you didn't estimate the space well. You didn't leave the enough space for five and you can only fit four, not a problem. Or the other way around, if you feel like, uh oh, that's five is too little here, I need more, no problem. You can have six, you can have more than that, as many as you would like. And remember, I told you you could use medium brush or small brush, whichever works. I find that for the bigger ones, medium brush is perfectly fine. But if you would rather use smaller brush, that's no problem. So I have a big one here, another big one goes right here. So I'm going to do the same thing. And I just added a little bit more red into my paint so you guys can see better that it's pink because really it is very, very pink. But for some reason, it shows almost white. Awesome. And you see my black is not perfectly dry, so it's slightly blending with my pink, which I personally don't mind. But if it bothers you, wait until it's fully dry, and then it's not going to blend with your pink at all. So this is my pink. Yeah, do you see it shows pink here, but on a canvas for some reason, camera is not picking up the color right, but you guys know that it's pink. And another big R one is going to go somewhere around here. Hopefully right here. Okay, I have three bigger flowers. The rest are gonna be smaller. Um, yeah, again, you can continue going with your medium brush or you can switch to smaller brush, whichever works. My next one is gonna be half flower, so it's gonna be right here, and I'm just gonna make a couple flicks. Done. Then I will have a smaller flower right here. Beautiful. And I'll have a smaller one right here. And you see, I'm just doing double flicks for every um, flower petal. Okay, next I'll put half flower right here. I'll put one more right here. Half flower right here. And that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to start adding um, small unopened flowers. How I'm going to do those is I'm going to flick from the outside in and they're going to go on both sides of the branches or on one side of the branch, depending where. Let me show you an example. So here's the branch, right? There's a branch right here. I want to place a couple on those. So closer to the uh, thicker part of the branch, you would like to have them a bit bigger and then a bit smaller as you go to the other side. And you can use your small brush or the top edge of your medium brush. Small brush, again, might be a better bet for you guys, but see, try both and see which one works better for you. Those things. And you can flick either from outside in or from inside out. This is the difference. If you flick from the inside out, sorry, from the outside in, the outside pider part is going to be thicker and the inside part is going to be thinner. So it really depends which look you would prefer. So I'm going to go around and I'll flick a few of those 
around most of my branches really. some on both sides here. This ones I will leave untouched, only the ends. So this end here, a lot of you. And it's hard for you to see probably your ends at some point, but it will be get better because we will highlight them with white. So later on, you're gonna see them really well. Let's add a couple more here. Here too. Done. Awesome. Now I'm going to let it be. I'm going to switch the brush and I'm going to move on to my red. So if you guys still have a little bit of that red paint that you used, good, you can use that. If not, make it again. We will need some of it. You're not gonna need much, but you will need some of it. And what we will start with, you're gonna add the same flicks. Now this time it's very important that you do them from the outside out, uh, from the outside in, around the ends of the branches. They can overlap your pink ones. You don't have to be avoiding necessarily your pink ones. They're more like fillers, so you add them anywhere you want. Just don't add them in the random spots that don't have branches. You want them to point towards the branch, always. But you can add them a bit higher too if you want. They're more like fillers for wherever you feel like the background is missing something. Do you see I'm adding them in so many different places? Here too. Here. There. Okay, I am happy with this amount. Actually, let's add a little more right here. Awesome. Now we're going to move on to the middles of our flowers. And we will add a couple dabs right in the middle here. Or a couple of brush strokes, that's fine too. For the half flowers, I usually just flick from the end, from the middle. This one. Oh, one more half flower. Awesome. Now we have our pinks, we have our reds, we have our blacks, and teal. We're still gonna add a couple 
little flicks of black now and then we'll be done with black forever and we'll only have white left so wash off your medium brush and grab grab some black okay now with a little bit of black on our medium brush we can add small flicks onto our large flowers only large flowers and all the flicks on them are going to be from the outside in let me show you on this one so they should be very very small and from outside in like this just a couple of places and add a few flicks do you see i'm not adding it everywhere Good, and now we're gonna add dots right in the middle of every flower. Ta-da, almost done guys, only white to go so wash off your small brushes make sure they're nice and clean and then we'll move on to white okay guys now while our flowers are drying up a little bit we'll take some white and we will add it on the background and on our branches and then we'll finish up with white on our flowers so take your clean small brush some white on it and we're gonna add some smudgy circles so let me show you how we're gonna do this and they're gonna go closer to the ends of the branches again or generally closer to the branches you can follow me on a positioning or you can position wherever it needs uh, to be on your painting so you're gonna add a circle right and then you're gonna take your finger and smudge it especially the outside don't aim on to smudging the inside too much it's mostly about smudging the outside and some of them you can make um, just like a little dab if you don't want to make it much bigger right they can be smaller or bigger so we'll add a couple of those wherever really Beautiful. Let's put the wrong side here. And then you can Put a couple of just regular dots around them as well. You don't have to dab, you don't have to smudge every dot. Add a couple here. said one more here why not right technically guys as I mentioned you can add them anywhere wherever you feel like your painting will benefit from it add it do you see how nice it looks it looks like it's glowing Yes. 
Now, we're going to move on to highlighting our branches. So I'm going to highlight my branches only from one side, and for me that's going to be top right side, and I will add more of a broken up wiggly line, so it's not going to be a straight line. You see a broken up wiggly line, and I'm adding it onto my black, so I'm not adding it on the outer side of my black for the uh, white parts. For the small parts, you can add wherever you want. If you want to add it on the outer side, that's no problem. You just want to have your branches visible at this point because they're so black on black, right? You can't really see them. That's why we're adding it. You see a broken up wiggly lines. Beautiful. Using another branch here. That is really great, guys. Okay, this one is not highlighted yet. Um, those top ones I am not going to highlight, but I'll add a couple more dots here. If you want to, you could highlight them. Up to you. I think they're very visible there as is already because they're on a, such a light spot. It's the other branches that are hard to see. Those branches are easy to see. And now we're going to highlight our flowers. So again, with the same brush, small brush, and a wiggly lines, I'm going to add a line, you see, to the... Uh, outer side, so it's still going to be on my pink, but closer to the edge. Do you see? That's what I'm doing. Technically, you could have just a flicks instead. It doesn't have to be line. Whatever way of highlighting feels better to you, use that. And on this one, again, you can do the lines, you can do the flicks. Either is fine. On this uh, pink flicks. Do you remember those? You could add highlight, but you don't have to. So it's up to you. You can just choose a few and add highlight on them. You don't have to do it on every single one. And I'm going to continue going here. So for the smaller ones, I'm just going to do flicks. Do you see just a little flick from the outside in? Add a couple more flicks on those. Okay, guys, and that is it. That's how we finish. Look how beautiful that is. Absolutely gorgeous. I am so loving this painting. The guys camera is not picking up how bright and vibrant it is it's so crazy bright and vibrant so the only thing after that that is left for you is to sign it so you choose a great spot and you put your signature on it wherever that may be for me i'll sign it right here and i'll sign it with white because why not awesome now if you haven't done your sides your edges of your canvas as we went as you can see i did my edges so it looks like my image is wrapped around the canvas. If you haven't done that, no problem. There are two options for you. Option number one, you can go back and literally color match on the edges or 
easier option just grab black and you paint the whole edge with black and it's still gonna look really really good awesome I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial I hope you loved painting with me today if you would like to share your results you can share them with us you can message us on um, Facebook you can post it on Facebook or you can email us directly if you want to show us how you did and how it turned out thank you all for joining us and I hope you have great the rest of your days and I hope to see you at more of our tutorials bye everyone <laughs>